qui a Barcellona al congresso dell'ESC non si è parlato solo di farmaci, non si è parlato solo di image ma anche di medicina digitale che ha avuto un ruolo molto importante. In particolare è stato presentato uno studio che ha suscitato molto interesse che si chiama eBrave che ha valutato la possibilità di diagnosticare in maniera precoce la fibrillazione triale utilizzando il proprio cellulare e un software particolare. Noi ci siamo fatti spiegare come stanno le cose da, dall'autore dello studio, il professor Axel Bauer. Professor Bauer, which is the objective of your study? What do you want to, to know exactly? Um, of, um, um, smart devices such as smart uh, phones or smart uh, uh, watches um, might be ideal screening tools for atrial fibrillation among the broad population. However, uh, presently there exists no randomized data in at-risk populations showing the real benefit of digital screening. And our objective was to test the efficacy of a scalable digital screening technology using ordinary smartphones for detection of treatment-relevant atrial fibrillation among a broad elderly at-risk population and in head-to-head -head comparison with usual care. Perfect, very clear. How it works, the technology that you have uh, used in the study? Patients uh, or participants assigned to digital screening downloaded uh, a, sp a specific uh, um, app for PPG self-screening. They used their own smartphones, placed the fingers on the, on the camera lens and started recording for one minute. And an automatic algorithm uh, checks the pulse waves for abnormalities which may be indicative for atrial fibrillation. In that case, participants were contacted by us, by the study team, and an external ECG loop recorder was sent to the participants for validation. PPG stands for? Photoplotismography. This is some sort of technique using available light to make pulse waves visible. And how has been validated this technology? So this technology has been validated in many, many studies before. This is not unique in our study. Uh, this similar algorithm has been used, for instance, in the Apple Heart Study or the Fitbit Heart Study. And uh, it's the technique basically uh, detects the, the sequence of, of oxygen saturation in the blood in the, in the finger. How do you enroll the, the, the patient, why they have been chosen, uh, upon which type of uh, risk factors? Yes, we cooperated with a large German health insurance and identified in the first step uh, policyholders at risk. They had to be 50 to 90 years, age is an important risk factor. We also selected participants based on increased CHATS VASC score of at least one or two in men or two in women and we ensured that participants had no AF before or did not receive anticoagulation before because otherwise it would not make sense to screen for AF. Yes. And then uh, these participants were um, mailed by the insurance company and informed in general about the study. And interested uh, policyholders could download a study app by which they were informed in detail about the study and could finally provide electronic informed consent. At that time, potential candidates became participants and could be randomized. So now, no direct face-to-face -face contact between patient and patient or people and the physician b b until the end of the study? Yes, that's true. The, the people came from all, of, all, all over Germany. Uh, there was no in-person contact at all. Uh, with the study participants, uh, we used the study app uh, and questionnaires which uh, allowed the communication with the study participants and we contacted the participants by phone if they did not answer the questionnaires. So there is some form of contact but no face to face. Okay, I'm a patient, I've uh, discharged uh, the, the, the software, I, I did the, the, the test uh, and, and then what happens? So if, if you decide to take part in the study and provide informed consent, you get randomized. Either you get, get directly to digital screening or six months thereafter. In case you go to, di to digital screening, you download a second app, the Preventicus Heartbeats app. This is a commercially available uh, app for, uh, for uh, pulse wave measurements. And you use this app at certain times, two times a day in the first 14 days and then two times a week thereafter. And uh, these uh, uh, measurements were automatically analyzed by a validated algorithm 
and in case of abnormal findings, the study team, we were informed about that and then contacted the participants. Okay, finally, the results, what did you measure exactly? Which was the, the, the primary endpoint? The primary endpoint of our study was newly detected atrial fibrillation treated with oral anticoagulation by an independent physician. This means that in the first step AF needed to be diagnosed and then the local treating physician around Germany had to decide whether to anticoagulate the patient and only if this was done then the endpoint was reached. And which were the results? Uh, uh, it was useful to use uh, your, your It was. Uh, we, we could f show for the first time that using digital technologies substantially increases the detection rate of treatment relevant atrial fibrillation compared to usual care. Nobody has known this before and uh, the effect size is almost twofold. So you can uh, double at least the detection rate of treatment relevant AF by implementing digital technologies. Which is very good. Uh, which are the possible application of this technology and also the future steps of, of, of what you have discovered? So I think uh, the, uh, our, our approach, our screening approach is scalable, which, which means you can reach as many people as, as you wish. But it's very difficult, a difficult task is to get the technology to the participants, to the people. And the, to, to, to achieve this, it is very important to motivate participants. And it has to be uh, um, elaborated how to best approach people. And uh, one uh, possible way could be that insurance companies or, um, could approach their policyholders, informing them about the importance of screening and then do the same what we did in the study. Or maybe giving a little discount on, on their on their on the cost of the policy. Yeah. So so we have no uh, relation to the PPG app at all. We are not uh, related to them. I think uh, our technology, our approach in general, is 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 applicable to all types of PPG technologies. It's nothing special. Um, I think uh, the Apple implemented a very similar technique, or UFI, or Fitbit, or whatever. Um, uh, but of course, there are some costs which need to be covered. Yeah? But, but taking into account the potential of preventing stroke, it might be a very good deal.